archives of Prasar Bharti presents the timeless treasure of golden era. We are in the esteemed presence of Sangeeta Kalanidhi Shri M.S. Gopalakrishnan, one of the greatest musical geniuses and one of the greatest violinists that India has seen this century. He has been a foremost performer in this field for more than 65 years. MSG, as he is very fondly and affectionately referred to, is the son of the great stalwart late Parur Sundaram Iyer, the famous violinist who was an authority on the two great Indian systems of music, namely Carnatic classical music and Hindustani classical music. MSG sir also learnt both the systems from his father and he has the unique distinction of being the only performer solo concert performer on the violin in both the systems in India today. Namaste and welcome sir. Good morning. Let us begin right at the beginning. You were born in the year 1931. Can you tell us something about the very early years of how much your memory can go back to in terms of, of course it's a known fact that uh, music was very much in the blood and in the family because your father was such an illustrious musician and violinist but can you share with us some of your earliest memories about your childhood, your mother, your father and your learning under your father? Okay, it's a pleasure to talk about this. My father, Professor Parur Sundar Meyer, who was an authority on Muddhi systems, Carnatic and as well as so, I learned from him afterwards from Pandit Krishnanand of Kirana Gharana. I was interested from, from my childhood so my father used to taught me from the age of five and at the age of eight I gave a performance with my father and brother at the All Bengal Music Conference, Calcutta. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At that time, Pandit Ogarla stalwarts of North Indian Music, he came and attended mm-hmm. and immediately he asked me to accompany. Yes, I remember. So I am only eight. Uh. I was a little afraid. Mm. No, don't afraid. Then by God's grace, uh. the performance went off very well. He also encouraged me. Do you remember what Raga did he sing? Do you have a memory of uh, what he, did he sing? He sang Marva. Marva. Because it's a very difficult Raga. <laughs> and whatever he sings, he would like to repeat the same. Yes. That is very important in North Indian music. Now they were yeah. simply yeah. putting both Shruti. But he used to play right. what he sings. Mm. It's a difficult singing. Yeah. Then if you, if you play well, he will say, Acha, Acha. Ah. So that, that gave me okay. encouragement. Uh-huh. Then uh, most of the, all the music conference in Calcutta, Bombay, mm. Surat, Ahmedabad, and all the places, I used to play with my father mm. first. Okay. Then I accompanied Pandit Tokar Nag. And 1952, uh-huh. he took us to Afghanistan, first uh-huh. foreign trip in 1952, mm. as a cultural delegation. Okay. So there I also played with my father, then accompanied Omkar Thakur, and I was presented a shawl and a medal from the king of uh, Afghanistan, mm. 1952. And two shawls, two big carpets mm. for me and for my father. Okay. <laughs> I was very thrilled to yeah. receive from the king, Zaheer Shah. Mm. Those must be priceless heirlooms now. Ah, yes. Yeah. That is my first. Yeah. Then I used to accompany, because my father mm. was a very rigorous teacher, so he made us to play mm. eight tubers per day. Mm. That is, we have to get up at 4 a.m., then 6 to 9, my father also joined with me mm. and my brother also joined with okay. me. 6 to 9, then we have to take some lunch. Then from 11 to 2, we have to learn ragas and uh, items. Okay. Then 2 o'clock, we have to again start. 2 to 5, we have to play an item and playing kalpana soras and mm. ragas mm. and my father will guide us okay. and whatever the mistake is a great taskmaster mm. he won't approve 
so we have to repeat 40 to 50 times <laughs> and if there is any scratch in bow he get angry do it what are you thinking because we were afraid of you <laughs> just like minute take whatever he says we used to play but did you uh, being small uh, boy at that time were you sometimes of course now for you and the entire world that kind of sadhana that kind of a drill that kind of rigor in terms of practice of course is there for everybody to see now but can you think about whether you used to sometimes feel like not doing it or uh, you would rather play outside or you would rather do something more fun than practicing was it an option or uh, was your respect and your faith in your father so high yeah. what we call the bhaya and the bhakti yeah. in your father so high that yes. there was no question of you even having this feeling that is if he goes out <laughs> we stop the violin <laughs> okay, we okay. feel happy that yeah, this yeah. Fa- father has gone mm. and he will come only after two hours okay. then he will come and ask mm. did you play yes <laughs> otherwise he will beat us <laughs> okay. so that is the way mm. we used to practice for three years mm. that is why I am still this playing this is you today. were what age at this time uh, from the age of six we started okay. this rigorous practice from from my 14 to 19 okay how did this fit into your studies or your academic schooling yes. is it was Because it possible for you to keep oh, up this oh, oh, very yes. strict uh, oh, hours of practice even during oh, school days during school days we used to play 6 to 8 at that time school start at 9:30 okay okay and close at 4:30 okay so on 6 to 8 then after coming from 6 to 9 okay. we had to play okay. on holidays full day saturday sunday <laughs> we had to okay. if it comes we will be afraid okay. how oh, we won't get <laughs> okay, okay. and he, he won't tell us to play okay and if we play well mm. he'll be happy he will give at that time mm. r- rupees and as paisa okay four and as mm. eight and as okay. and you memorize this malakarta ragas okay if you memorize and tell him uh. he will give four and as so okay. we'll go and buy chocolates uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you had a, a kind of a happy childhood in spite of having a very strict father uh. and um, you know being forced to of course in the beginning it's always the pressure of the parents to start practicing at what age you you saw the fruits of this practice and then nobody had to tell you or force you in an artist's life or even in a student's life the beginning is always something which the father the mother or the or the, or the teacher will impose but after a certain stage for a, for a good student or a, for a good artist a stage comes when that pressure is no longer necessary you will feel like doing the sadhana by yourself ah uh. at what stage do you at what age do you think uh, if you can remember you reached that see i tell my own is i lost my mother mm. at the age of 2 mm. and my father was and my grandmother lived up to 100 years mm. so my father was my father mother and guru so i am the eighth child to my father uh. but now we are four only okay i am very pet to him ah, okay. the same time ah, okay. and whatever i ask he will be and do it and he also let us to let me to read and write ah. must have okay. but i will concentrate on because i had the interest in playing well rather than studies <laughs> anyhow i passed it till my sslc okay. Okay. 1948 okay. then he wanted me to join college but i told him i am playing i am very happy uh-huh. after same time i used to play on my own uh-huh. and uh, i gave performance with my father and violin trio with my brother and uh-huh. father uh-huh. then duet with my brother yeah. then solo uh-huh. then now i used to play with my daughter yeah. narmada yeah. and my son ji suresh kumar mm-hmm. and narmada is playing with me for over 25 yeah. years mm-hmm. she is also practice well mm. and son is also practice well she is coming up wonderful 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 so at that time during school time we have to play accordingly then i got interest on my own so i used to practice four or five years not eight mm. hours mm. because i will go for performances okay i have accompanied all the leading of old carnatic violinist mm. 
செம்பை வைத்தியநாத பகவதர் அடிக்குடி ராமான் சேங்கர் ஜிஎன்பி மதுரமணியர் பல்லடம் செஞ்சியூட் டி ஆர் மாலி அண்டு வீண சங்கர சாஸ்திரி ஆல் தி முசிரி சுப்பிரமணியர் ஆலத்தூர் பிரதேஷ் அண்ட் இன் லேடிஸ் ஆல்சோ ஐ கம்பெனிட் எம்எல் வசந்தகுமார் அண்ட் எம் எஸ் சுப்பலட்சுமி பிகாஸ் ஐ ஆல் ஐ கம்பெனிட் ஆல் தி ஆர்டிஸ்ட் அண்ட் எவ்ரி ஆர்டிஸ்ட் ஹேஸ் எ கிரேட் ரிகார்ட் ஃபார் மீ and at that time mm. they are also afraid of me <laughs> if i or shadow the yeah, from yeah. the townwards yeah. i used to shadow like a wife and husband <laughs> okay, okay great, great before that i used to play too much that because the during spirit, my childhood the spirit of playing yeah, ah, yeah. because then my father told her, you have to play within limits ah, after that i changed it. Uh, msc sir you ah. talked about your childhood ah. and uh, you were the youngest of ah. eight children ah. uh, can you tell us something about your other siblings oh yes my first sister was a sita lakshmi ah. he also sang very well and violin then mukta ambal he also sang then my brother and my sisters they have also passed diploma course in music mm. play violin okay of course it is well known that you follow you belong to the parur family and you are caretaker of that excellent tradition but can you tell me how your father was well known as parur sundaram ayer but how come your name came to be ms gopalakrishna my father was born at uh, parur kerala near kaladi where great sagara chandra was born then he uh, went to bombay uh, introduced by his dearest friend he introduced him pandit vishnu devambar paluskar mm, mm. great guy yeah. so he played violin and he was very impressed and asked my father to accompany him so that is in 1916 1916 ah. so he used to learn in the sony also and accompanied all his performances did he have a, a formal hindustani guru so to say which Vish- should the gambar paluskar was his guru yes. but because of his genius probably kelvi by through the nyana of hearing itself he would have picked up the aesthetics yes. of uh, because you said that he had played for uh, vishnu the gambar paluskar first time on this point can we also get to know when you were learning under your father these two systems are similar but yet they are very different in terms of the approach to raga the approach to vistara manodharma the aesthetic gamakas are all very different and distinct so did you learn both the systems in a systematic way or was it how did your father teach you these two systems at the same time my father learned both the systems hindustani from pandit vishwambar and carnatic from trivandrum asthana dons ramaswami bagadar he stayed in trivandrum for 8 years mm. and he had his gurukula under him so he learned vocal and violin mm. so after learning hindustani he settled in madras okay he came to madras and we were born at madras, madras. because i have visited my native place one or two times okay already. okay so i can understand malayalam uh. but i cannot read and write okay that is how your name is ms gopalakrishna no, madras M. i was parur gopalakrishna i have no objection okay, okay. but my father was told ah. you will have m okay numerologically mm. it gave you more name okay <laughs> so m means old madras okay okay m sundar meyer madras sundar meyer ha gopalakrishna yeah. wonderful so i learned both the systems from him <laughs> Sir, you were talking about your father's uh, training in both the systems huh. and uh, how how he taught you the basic elements of both the systems huh. at the same time. Huh. He learned from Pantu Tuvistam Parpalaskar. At that time, he was a bachelor. Huh. He's only 17 years old at okay, that time. Okay. So, he learned so many items from him. Hmm. he used a company pandit vishwambar who was also a very tough difficult master okay at that time 
ಪಂಡಿತ್ ಓಂಕಾರ್ ನಾಥ್ ಠಾಕೂರ್ ಪಂಡಿತ್ ನಾರಾಯಣ ರಾವ್ ವ್ಯಾಸ್ ಪಂಡಿತ್ ವಿನಾಯಕ ರಾವ್ ಪಟ್ಟು ಅಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಆರ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಕಲೀಗ್ಸ್ ಮೈ ಫಾದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಕಲೀಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಇಂಪ್ರೆಸ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಹಿಸ್ ವೈಲಿನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ದಟ್ ಇನ್ ನಾರ್ತ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಸಾರಂಗಿ ವಾಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ದ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೂಮೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ವೋಕ್ ದೆನ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಮೈ ಫಾದರ್ ವೆಂಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಬೈ ಹಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ ವೈಲಿನ್ ಓಕೆ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಟರ್ನ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ವೈಲಿನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬಿನ್ ಪ್ರಾಪಗೇಟೆಡ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ದಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ವೈಲಿನ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವೈ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಟರ್ನ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ so many but it we ji jogan other persons are playing violin yeah. before that in hindustani concert accompaniment is not at a question mm. just to give surti and other thing okay. i'm sorry to say okay okay and nowadays after the instruments has come sitar has taken practically and tabla yeah. 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 before that still huh. if we play khyal huh. the tabla has to play only, only take yeah. that's the way Yeah. then after settling in madras huh. have you heard your father accompany uh, some of these artists other than uh, of course you said that from a young age you were playing with him uh, and you were accompanying uh, artists like omkar uh, nath ji uh, but have you heard him play uh, accompany some of these artists only he accompanied pandit vishwanath var palaskar okay. afterwards we used to play solo okay, okay. only i used to accompany omkar nath pandit omkar nath thakur okay then he settled in madras huh. after that we are born in our house where okay. i am still living okay. my love for a little firm with that i was born here huh. so my brother plays while i have already told you yeah, yeah. anantaraman yeah. and we used to practice together mm. we used to play together then my father thought why not we blend both the systems huh. so after hearing in this sane and carnatic he used to blend both the system uh-huh. in gamagas also okay. just like kalyani yaman uh-huh. so many rag uh-huh. so he used to join and he gave it as parur style mm. was there a common basically from what i understand is that there was a common uh, technical aesthetic way in which he taught you uh-huh. by which you could play both the systems uh-huh. without much of uh, uh-huh. difficulty uh-huh. is that right and that is what uh, you say is the parur style uh-huh. yeah so can you elaborate little bit, bit more and maybe even demonstrate some aspects of this uh-huh. style which are very unique uh, oh, yes. in violin playing so i will demonstrate now uh-huh. how we play how we mix it uh-huh. what is the difference okay. see we cannot tell in words uh-huh. sir at this point i think it would be very useful and informative for musicians music students and rasikas alike if you can tell us analytically speaking uh-huh. some aspects of the uh-huh. parur style uh-huh. which were very innovative uh-huh. in terms of violin playing okay. Okay. parur style because my father used to blend both the systems and we have a special practice in northern india simply without gamakas they will play and in south india it is called pedi vadyam nobody will go beyond sa re ga and my father thought why not we play so he used to taught us in three octaves mm. and with there are so many techniques one finger two fingers and dravachati mm. and vocal style so i will demonstrate some of the same raga in different styles okay and i, I think also the hallmark of the parur style if i am correct is definitely. very long and continuous producing ah, sound yes. like the vocal long so we're talking bow. about gayaki ah. the long bow ah. rather than it being ah, instrumental yes. the long bow and ah. it simulating the voice continuity ah. in olden days everybody will short bow ah. long bow is not at all there mm. and if i put it they will it gets scratching sound mm. so without scratching sound with melody mm. you have to practice say he used to play one swara with one bow for minimum one minute mm. because he used to want us to play first taken six we have to see with the watch 10 seconds 20 30 mm. 40 50 60 it's very after only 60 yeah. then 
no that if sound will be equal uh. in the bedel it won't go a wabbling sound and every sora we have to play mm. and with you have to practice with tambura mm. because harmony of tambura means you will get all the soras mm. we will get all the and that all is the, the correct sense. way if you re mm. pa ga mm. i will just play yeah hello i will demonstrate how my father prafur sundarabhai taught me the parur style first we will play how to bowing tuning we have to play with the tuning first first tune with one string then join two two strings then we'll put both then we will start the beginning we used to play raga maya mala gola in hindustani it is bhairav but he will start from bass beginning step practice in three speeds first two and four then after which if i got strength we can go to fourth speed also usually three speeds three octaves first plain then with gamaka now that play with two strings then with one string without any scratching sound We speed with the same gamaha. This is without gamaha.
I am taking Amsuddhani in both Carnatic style and Hindustani style. If how it comes first Carnatic. If you the play in this sunny ragas i am taking yaman now then mall comes hindola have to first 10 seconds then 20 30 up to 1 minute without any scratch each sura without gamaka then with the tuning tambura is very essential there are so many notes in tambura it will come it, that is only correct way my father used to tell we have to practice with tambura and the sura we have to bear it in mind and play the long bone just i'll put for some minutes and when you put bow nobody has to know that when we are turning the bow it will be equal sound it's and this one very difficult that is when you are changing the bow nobody should know we are changing same time now in this way he will teach and in carnatic there are varnas and kirtanas so many style now main doctor Narmada will demonstrate everything. 